Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As Reverend Annie said, I'm Reverend Holly Nakama, and um, well, to be honest, I'm happy to be here with you today. But it is—it's a daunting, it's a daunting task after the week that we've had. I, I volunteered um, when I knew that Dave was in the hospital. I sent an email to Dallas saying, you know, hey, I, you know, I've given some talks recently. I'd, I'd be happy to, you know, come to the interface. And this was on Monday. And, <laughs> So, a little lighthearted note, uh, watch what you say yes to. Um, and, and yet that really ties into our talk. Uh, for all, we're all being called forth at this, this moment. The, the talk is called, this, this is the time. This is the time that we are all being called forth in love and in justice. And over the course of this election season, no matter what our political viewpoint or party, I think we can all agree that a mirror has been held up in front of us. And we have seen our collective shadow. And I think we can all agree that we have not liked what we've seen. And now is the time that we get to choose what kind of world do we want to rebirth right now. All of you should have, and if you don't have, a little glass mirror-like tile. Um, Della can come around and just raise your hand if you don't have one. Uh, this, is a, this is a symbol that we are all part of the collective reflection that we're seeing back reflected to us, as Marlena so artfully shared with us in that beautiful, compelling reading today. Each of us has a responsibility for what the world sees when it looks in that mirror. Each of us holds this little piece of the mirror to contribute to the whole. So as each of you receive or hold on to your little piece, I'd like you to hold it to your heart once you get it. And if you don't have it quite yet, just put your hand over your heart. And I would like you to hold in your heart all that you have seen that does not match your vision for what you would like to be in the world today. And I'd like you to also hold in your heart what you would like to see reflected back to you in that mirror. I'd like you all to feel free to have whatever feelings that you're having around this election no matter what other people have said to you, no matter what you've heard from anyone else, what is the shadow you would like to see removed or illumined? And what is it that you would like to see reflected back to all of us in the world? Now is the time. When you're ready, everyone take a deep breath together and open your eyes. And if you'd like, please shake out a little. I think there's so much tension in the world right now that we all probably could do the hokey pokey. <laughs> I know you've done that before here, but I mean, I think really, everyone just shake it out a little. <sighs> so, of course, in miracles would say that what's happening right now is a cry for love. If you're a course student, you know that it says that everything is love or a cry for love. And we are hearing the cries of love coming from every corner, not just of our nation, but of the ripple effects into how our, our nation is affecting the world. 
And somehow, in all of this, we want to find a balance between this new divine feminine that wants to rise up and find balance with divine masculine. Now is the time for this. And none of us knows how this looks or will turn out. I've been reading a book by a Sufi teacher named Llewellyn Vaughn Lee. Anyone know of him? A few of you. So, he has a book called Return of the Divine Feminine and the World's Soul. And even though he wrote this book over six years ago, I feel like it was prophetic in letting us know what would be happening during this time and what kind of challenge and opportunity we have to rebirth something new. I'd like to share just a piece from it. To live this dream of reconnection takes courage and foolishness. We are uneasy, uncertain, as we should be at the beginning of such a venture. But only by living it completely, without excuses, can we claim what is waiting for us. The beyond is beckoning. <clears throat> the beyond is beckoning. We have surely seen the darkness and the light rising up in the world. Nothing feels certain to many of us right now, as was said earlier. But there is a magic, a power waiting to happen, and freedom long sought waiting to be fulfilled if we are willing to awaken. And that's the question to all of us today. Are we willing to awaken? And this work of awakening sounds like we would all say immediately, of course I'm willing to awaken. Of course, why wouldn't I? Hmm. And yet this work is hard work. If we're honest, we all have some awakening to do. This awakening work is messy. It is like birth itself. It is painful, it is loud, it is uncontrollable, and any woman who's ever been in labor knows that the only way to move through it is to let go and to sink into our body and to feel when that moment is to push. And now is the time to push. I don't think any of us can deny, especially after the acts that we've seen in our community, the Muslim woman being asked to remove her hijab at threat of being set afire. None of us can deny that the time now is to push. I won't re-traumatize everyone with all the stories that we've heard, but we've all seen the stories, heard the stories on Facebook of all of the ways in which we are not creating the we story right now. And all of the cries of love to create a we story right now. That is one of the founding principles of this interfaith center is that we believe that we are a we, a unified we. And so how do we go about getting from where we are to truly being a we? Because the mirror that's being held up from us with that shadow that we're not liking what we're seeing, it has been festering, some would say, for centuries. And it is coming to a head right now. And so I've been listening to stories. I consider myself a bit of a story collector. And I've been collecting stories all week in my heart. <coughs> and wrestling with them. Asking, how, where do we go from here? And one of the spiritual teachers in our community, Master Kim Singh, uh, from Sun Shen, 
was sharing with some of his students this week that part of the process of awakening is allowing our emotions, both the ones that we call positive and the ones that we call negative. We have something to learn from being willing to breathe into that space of uncomfortability, to breathe into spaces where we feel the contraction, because the contraction is there to teach us something. It's not there to punish us. It's there to liberate us if we're willing to go there. How can we breathe into those places of contraction so that we can grow from it? The negative has a purpose for us to grow. If we touch a hot stove, we learn, don't do that again. If someone crosses our boundary and we become angry, we learn a boundary has been crossed. Like an angry mother bear, we become protective. That is the righteous aspect of love that comes up within us. Love and justice and truth, they're all part of the same coin. They cannot be separated from one another. So, allow us to take the time that we need to take to let the emotions, both positive and negative, move through us. Let us have compassion for each of the processes that we're in. None of us knows exactly what's being triggered in one another right now. I have friends who vulnerably shared on Facebook that they've been raped and their pain bodies are in PTSD mode. We have children crying themselves to sleep, afraid their immigrant parents are going to be deported. We don't know the full impact of what other people's process looks like, so let us be compassionate. Let us be kind to one another. We also don't know what it's like to be accused of who we voted for, who we didn't vote for. Let us be kind to one another. And take care of ourselves. Let us take the time to root ourselves in this forest in which we all live. I was reading this week some of the great spiritual teachers from around the globe, across every religious tradition. And many of them echoed the same phrase. Take time to go within, to reach within, and to find that place where you can access your own connection to the divine. Let us try as best as we might to find that place and to hold space for everyone to try to find that. But let us be compassionate in doing so, that we are all going to arrive at those places in different times and in different ways. And let us make space for that. Now is the time, says Zenju, a Buddhist teacher, Many of us have been walking a spiritual journey forever and preparing for every moment of our existence. We are ready and we have been waiting for this particular time. Our rage, pain, and anger are to be exposed only for us to transform and mature with it. No more just practicing the dance. We must now dance. And this is not a dress rehearsal. All of us are really blessed in this community, this faith community, which has been here for how many years now exactly? 17, 18. 17, 18 years. We've been able to be steeped. And whether you've been part of this community, perhaps you, like me, have been in another New Thought interfaith community that has steeped us in a we story, has made it the norm that we are to love one another, 
despite our differences. Not everyone has the privilege that we have had of having that knowledge and those tools. And so we here all are being called forth to be emissaries. Emissaries to do our part in our part of our circles that we're part of, in our families that we are part of. Now is the time for the heavy lifting. I have been so heartened by the stories and the courage of the people I've seen in the circles that I'm part of on Facebook, of people who've stood up and said very vulnerably their stories. They've shared risky conversations that they've had with people they don't normally talk to about politics. They've risked in courage and in love to stand up for justice, and they've also risked to try to reach across the bridge and understand. To understand how do we form unity in such division. And what I think is so unique about this time is after reading the wisdom of so many spiritual teachers on the planet right now, some of the most inspiring words came from people that I know sitting in this room and people that I know that wrote on Facebook. And I think that's an indication of the kind of rebirth that we're having. You know, in the darkest times of history, Jesus came on board, Buddha came on board, Lao Tzu came on board. People came on board to be way showers. But right now, the spiritual teachers in our midst, the ones that are the most public, are saying, you are the spiritual teachers. You are the emissaries. You are the ones who came to save the world. All of us. We can't pretend that it's somebody else's work anymore. Yeah. It's nobody else's work but ours. And I'd like to read you a very compelling piece that I got from a friend on Facebook, one of these warrioresses who is standing in the gap, willing to be the emissary. And I'd like you to take in deeply and hear her words and reflect upon how you are being called to be the answer to the world's cries right now. If you ever felt called to be a healer, a teacher, a salve for the people, now is your time to come forward. If you are a word weaver, or a light worker, or a lender of ears, now is your time to come forward. If you have been hiding medicine in your pockets, behind your eyes, Beneath your tongue, waiting for the right time to share it, now is your time to come forward. If you have been waiting for approval, for validation, for vindication, before sharing your most precious gifts, now is your time to come forward. If you are waiting for the perfect time, the perfect mentor, the perfect plan, now is your time to come forward. If you can bring laughter, comfort, and warmth to the most solemn spaces, now is your time to come forward. If you have been called to use your life for something greater than yourself, and I believe we all have, now is your time to come forward. Yes, you might be terrified. Yes, you might be unpopular. Yes, you might disrupt the social norm. 
and I hope you do. Yes, the world needs you now. Come forward. Imperfect, broken, uncertain, raw, willing, obedient. <coughs> Come forward. Lend your gifts to the greater good. Help make the world a better place so we might all be free. So I'd ask you each to take your piece of the mirror, <clears throat> the mirror that reflects light or darkness back to us, and decide what is the light you're willing to bring forward in this darkness. And I'd ask you in no particular order to come up and to drop your piece of the mirror in here, that our collective light may all come together and shine brighter. So I invite you all forward to come drop your light <coughs> together for the healing of all. Thank you. 